Britt Bennett, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, you are truly one of the most prolific writers of our time. And once again, you have written a book that has ascended to the top of the New York Times. And not only that, got into a bidding war where HBO topped out 17 other people, 17 other companies that wanted the rights to this book and HBO wanted out. How does it feel for yourself to, to have 2020 be a great year when it really is like a dismal year? Because it is, it is like that for many people. There's some great moments and it's in the midst of this year. Are you just gonna lie and say all the good things to you happened in 2021? <laughs> I know it feels it feels so wild and it feels so obvious to say that because I think it's true of everybody that this has been such a surreal year. But I think for me, I felt so just lucky um, to have experienced these highs and to have experienced such a warm reception for this book. Your, your book, The Vanishing Half, is truly one of the most amazing stories. You've set the story in, in the Jim Crow South world that has come into DC, let's say. So it's 50 years ago, and it's the story of twin sisters who run away from home and then go into a world where although there are twins, they're identical twins, one of them is lighter than the other, and so she chooses a path where she passes as white. And that is literally the jumping off point of the story where I won't lie, when I first read it, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a book about, you know, racism in the South or slavery or this. And then I was like, okay, no, 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 it's about Jim Crow, but it's still, it's still oh, there's gonna be a white man who's, and it's like, no, I, 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 I haven't read many stories like this. It was a beautiful book about black people tackling the issues of race and colorism and the ideas. Why did you choose to frame it like that? It was a really interesting idea. I mean, well, thank you, first of all. Um, I think for me, I wanted to write a story about those nuances within a black community. Um, I think sometimes there's a tendency to think that the more interesting story is, is conflict between black and white people. But for me, really, I, I've always said the most interesting thing to happen to black people is not necessarily white people. Often the more interesting stories and the more complicated stories are within our own community. So I wanted to, to think about the effect of colorism, uh, which is a result of white supremacy and it's a result of that type of ideology. But what does this colorism do to people and how does it affect the choices that these characters are able to make in their lives? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in a country where literally shades determined your life, you know? I, I'm seen as being, oh, I, in, in, during apartheid, it was like, I'm technically superior to my mom and I'm inferior to my dad. And yet we're all in the same family. And, and what I loved about this book is you, you, you write in a way where the characters themselves start to understand how people perceiving them can determine their, their, their way in life. When you think about race and when you're writing about it in the book, is it interesting to rewrite the story of, of, of like a ridiculous thing that was created and then like try to figure out the rules through the eyes of these characters? Yeah, I think that that was one of the things that was so interesting to me was the absurdity of all of it. The absurdity of these rules, the idea of, of what does it e even mean to be black if it's not looking, quote unquote, looking black? Um, what does it actually mean for these characters to be black or to be white? Uh, to what degree are they performing race um, and, and how are they sort of creating or, or deconstructing themselves in a different way. So I think writing this book, and, and which is, takes this idea of colorism and really pushes it to a very extreme, um, but looking at it from that really extreme lens gave me a way to kind of see the absurdity of race and all of its, uh, all of its nuances even now and, and when I'm growing up and when I'm alive, which is a very different time period than the book is set. Oftentimes when we read stories, especially in the black community of a black person trying to pass as white, that story is written from a place of judgment. Oh, of course you want to act like you white. You want to act like you better. You want to escape. You want to be better than us. And in this story, it was more like just a person going like, hey man, I've made these decisions. I grapple with them. And as a reader, we're just forced to live with them grappling with that. Why did you choose to write it in such a way where it's like, there's no, there's no you judging. It's just you portraying what they're going through. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think a lot of passing stories are very moralizing. Um, the idea that the character who passes is deserving of punishment, often death in a lot of these stories. Um, and I think for me first, I just didn't find that interesting to, to condemn somebody or to ask, is it good or is it bad to pass? That was just an uninteresting question. Um, but I think also there's a weird way in which th those stories kind of reaffirm the racial hierarchy by punishing a character who has transgressed in some way. So I, I objected to it from a like a level of interest kind of standpoint, but also from a kind of political and, and moral standpoint. I wasn't interested in judging these characters. I just wanted to think about what are the 
what, what do you gain and what do you lose in deciding to become somebody new and to leave your community behind and create a whole new identity? Well, I, I honestly, I understand why 17, you know, media companies were bidding for the rights to your book. Um, I, I should have jumped in and made it 18. I'll just add in my two cents. <laughs> Um, because really, you, you've, you've written a masterpiece. Congratulations. There's a reason it was a bestseller. There's a reason it's going to be turned into an amazing movie or TV series, whatever it is. You've done a, a phenomenal job once again. And I can't wait to read your writing over and over and over and over again. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Britt. Look after yourself. <laughs>